Should government ban discrimination based on sex or race? Now, this is obviously a very controversial issue. Uh, it, it is in the news uh, almost constantly. And the answer to is no, they have no right to ban any kind of discrimination. Now, the government has no right to discriminate. Government has no right to discriminate. From the perspective of government, we are all equal. That is the meaning of, in the Declaration of Independence, the statement about, you know, we're all created equal. You know, from a perspective of rights, all of us have the same rights. So the perspective of government, it cannot discriminate. And if you think back about discrimination in the South, uh, pre the Civil Rights Act, that discrimination was sanctioned by government. And much of the discrimination was government discrimination. There were laws in the books that differentiated between what whites and what blacks could do. There were laws in the books that, that defined you know, school districts and, and racial discrimination in schools and in other places. Bus service. Bus service was a municipal service. It was a government-run entity. A government-run entity cannot discriminate. You know, the idea of blacks in the back of the bus on a government bus is, is, uh, is wrong, and that should be eliminated. It should have been eliminated way before 68. It's a disgrace in a black market in this country that it existed that long. However, individuals have every right to discriminate. You discriminate every day. You decide who to choose to invite to your home or not to invite to your home. Do I have the right to come into your home whether you know me or you don't know me and have dinner at your house? Um, or if you don't like certain types of people, whether rational or irrational your likes or dislikes, you have a right to choose who to invite into your home. There's no fundamental difference between your home and your business. It's an extension of you. It's your property. And you have every right on your property to decide who to invite in and who not to invite in. Now, I, since this is a controversial issue, let me make it personal, right? I was born Jewish. I think everybody has a right to put on their restaurant a sign that says no Jews allowed. Now, I wouldn't deal with the person who did that. I don't think anybody should deal with the person who did that. It's despicable. It's racist. It's collectivist. It's irrational. It's one of the nastiest phenomenals in human history, this idea of racism and this kind of discrimination based on non-essentials. You have a right to be irrational. You have a right to be stupid. You have a right to be mean as long as you're not violating my rights. Since I don't have a right to walk into your restaurant, you're not violating my rights by discriminating against me or by excluding me from your restaurant. So people should have a right to discriminate in their private lives, and that includes in their businesses. Businesses are private. This whole idea that a restaurant is public property or public space is ludicrous. Somebody had to invest in it, somebody manages, somebody runs it, somebody owns it. And that means that somebody should be able to decide who walks in and out of that restaurant. Now, I also believe that in a truly free market and in a country of generally rational people, this kind of discrimination would be eliminated because businesses that discriminated would be wiped out by businesses that didn't. So, for example, if somebody did have a sign that says Jew, uh, no Jews allowed, nobody would go to that restaurant, including non-Jews, because they would say, I don't want to deal with irrational people like this. And they would boycott the restaurant, and the restaurant would go out of business. If I discriminated in more subtle ways, I didn't hire the most talented person. I hired only white people. Right? Then I would lose out, because the, really, the, the, the blacks who were more talented than the whites, let's say, that I hired would go to work for my competitor, and they would beat me in business. Now, this might take a while, but I would suffer. The discriminator ultimately suffers the, the consequence of the discrimination. Add to that the discrimination based on such non-essentials like race or sex. That is such an irrational phenomenon that that is only the tip of the iceberg, I'm sure, of their irrationality. So they are failed human beings. Racists are failed human beings. And that failure would manifest itself in many, many other ways in their lives, and they would, their businesses would crumble and, and get defeated. And, and it's, it's the fact that that didn't happen as fast as it should have in the South, for example, you know, is, is a sad testament to how rational people, what, how, how much irrationality existed in the South during that period. And it, it, it's sad. But I don't think it would have been sustainable, even in the South, if not for government sanction and government sponsorship.